I've had this Bosch Glide 10 inch miter saw for uh, quite a while now and I've been using it pretty heavily the last few months on quite a few cabinetry projects. And for those projects when I'm working on the face frame or cabinet doors, I generally use poplar. And what I have found, and not unique to this miter saw by any means, you'd encounter this with any single miter saw that you use, but I'm getting a lot of tear out on my pieces. And at the beginning of this video, I showed you a vertical cut just to show a bit of an exaggeration of exactly what kind of tear out I'm talking about. But you get these fuzzies and even when you sand them down, it doesn't give that perfect edge. Generally not a huge deal, but something that, that I'd like to minimize as much as possible. So I find myself kind of at this next stage in my current project where I have a few cabinet doors to batch out and I think now is the time for me to put on that auxiliary zero clearance fence. So I'm gonna walk you through my thinking, the build, and uh, then also test in some final thoughts. So this is gonna be a very basic one that I think you can apply to a wide variety of miter saws, not just the Bosch Glide. So uh, let's open the saw up and uh, let's get our plans together. Okay, so let's first of all get this saw opened up. And uh, let's talk about what we have here. I do have it unplugged. I try to always leave it the cord visible on YouTube just so I don't get those comments. Uh, but we have these really nice fences on the Bosch Glide and they hold their squareness really well. They slide really nicely, very happy with these. And this is as close as they get to um, the actual blade part. So just to show you when this comes down, there's probably about an eighth of an inch gap on this side between the blade and probably at least a quarter of an inch on the right side. So what my goal is, is to essentially bring a single piece using half inch MDF across the entirety of this. And then I'm just gonna use the blade in its squared up position and bring it down and cut that hole so that then when I am cutting true miters, I can just move it off to the side. So uh, again, so it's gonna kind of be like this, mount it up, go through. And luckily on the Bosch Glide, we have a few different ways to mount this. So we have some holes on the bottom. We also have some holes on the top of these parts that move. And just to show you, again, this is unplugged. So again, so this moves, so I can't mount in both spots. And I do want to easily be able to move this zero clearance fence out of the way. So I'm gonna be using the top two holes on both sides. And when I was going through my hardware bin, I was lucky to find uh, these little machine screws that use the exact same hex size as the onboard uh, hex wrench for the miter saw. So I'm gonna be using those. So basically put those through, put the nut on the back and I'll countersink them into the MDF when I'm using it. I know this is popular, not it. Um, so yeah, so let's take some measurements and then make our cut and we'll put it on and mark our drill holes. So overall length, we have 25 and three quarter inches and the vertical. So I'm gonna basically go all the way from the base here and take it to the top of this fence. So that's four and a quarter. So 25 and three quarters by four and a quarter. All right, so I have my half inch MDF a uh, nice clean side over here. Let's just eye it up. Yep, so that's a good side. So what I'm gonna do is set my table saw to four and a quarter inches. And get the dust collection hooked up, turned on, and make this rip cut. Okay, so we have our four and a quarter inch MDF. So it looks good height-wise, both sides. And uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to rip this or cut this using the miter saw to its length. So let's just confirm that measurement one more time. And that is 25 and three quarters. Okay, let's test the length. And we're perfect. All right, so now what I'm going to do is we're going to mark the holes on the back in this exact spot. Let's get rid of that guy. So we do have a bit of a leeway in these as far as movement is concerned. It's kind of nice because then if, if I find that the zero clearance insert is starting to kind of move away a bit, I could probably just slide it a bit over, make a new, uh, new cut. So I'm just going to mark it in the middle. I think that's all I'm going to do. So let's do that. Line it up there, and I 
So all that I've done is just put a couple of dots in the spots where I'm gonna drill through, uh, and then we're gonna countersink from the other side. So I'm not too worried about tear out on this, although I will probably put a backer board on. Okay, so first of all, let's check the size of these machine bolts, screws, whatever you wanna call them. Um, if you don't have one of these, these are super handy for getting that quick diameter and they're quarter inch. So what I'm gonna do, we're going to open up uh, some new Brad Point drill bits. And quarter inch. So we're all set to go with the Brad Point. And I'm just gonna put that scrap piece underneath. And one of the great things with Brad Point bits is just how it has that center point. So you can put it right on those dots and it's gonna give you a nice clean cut around it as well. So not super concerned about a clean cut, although this should give me really good results. Look at that dust. But that dust is no match for my Festool dust extractor. Okay, so we have four clean holes. So let's just test the alignment. Okay, so we've got that there. And let's just test the bolt going through. Okay. So this one is a little wonky. There we go. Okay, so th they'll all fit. Um, so now what we need to do is we need to countersink this, just to show you. So uh, let's go see what countersink bits we have. Okay, so we have our countersink collection here. And let's see. So this one's exactly a quarter inch. I'm not really going for that type of precision. Um, doesn't really matter on this. So I'm actually gonna use, I'm gonna go one size up and uh, just drill down, see how it goes. And then I'll, I'll throw this in and uh, that'll help align all the others. Not going too formal with this one. Okay, glad I tested on that. Cause it's, it's a little rough. But I'm not too concerned about that, so let's do a little bit more. You know what? That's good enough for me. I think I just need to go a little tiny bit deeper, um, but that's fine. Okay, there we go. Just before we mount it, I'm just gonna knock down any sort of potential edges, just with some 120 grit uh, sanding block. Okay, so we're back at the saw. So let's get that on. And let's put a couple bolts through. Hopefully they all still align. Okay, let's just square it up because again, we've got that little bit of wiggle room, which is awesome because I think again, with that, that zero clearance, um, and I'm actually gonna shift it a little bit more this way. Gotta love spam calls coming in. And that way I can just nudge it over just anytime I, it feels like it's a little bit out of alignment because I pretty much always have my good work piece on the right, but this is maybe, just fill it on the back, maybe an eighth of an inch uh, off center. So we then put our bolts on, or nuts on. Again, the saw is unplugged. And then we can just use the onboard wrench. Just tighten these up. There, so we've got our auxiliary fence mounted. So now, really the, the next step is just for us to make that initial cut through. So I'm making sure that it's on my zero mark. So it'll be a perfect 90 degree cut. Uh, so let's get the saw plugged in and the dust extractor hooked up. There we go. So we have our nice, clean, perfectly blade width um, cut. And let's grab that same piece of poplar and do the same cut on the other side so we can compare the two. So we've got that piece of poplar. I'm gonna hold it that way. And looking at the back there, there's nothing. So I guess you can kind of see a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Um, 
which is just pretty much the nature of any kind of through cut like that. But just to compare, let's make sure this comes up on video. This was the initial cut with no fence, no auxiliary fence. And then over here, with the fence. So nothing, there's, again, just this tiny, 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 tiny bit. And let's make one more cut. Yeah, so we see there, very little, one, one little fiber from the bottom. But uh, compared to no fence, That's a, a massive improvement. And I would like to note that um, as far as the throat plate and any sort of zero clearance with that, uh, this was adjustable in and they actually encourage you to do that and then to cut into it. So the blade has cut into this throat plate. And when this does go, um, I believe it's three eighths of an inch. So it shouldn't be too difficult for me to cut out my own and uh, insert it in here. But for now, this solves 95% of my problems when it comes to getting nice clean cuts on the miter saw. So big thanks for watching. Uh, I know this is a very simple auxiliary fence and that's really what it was meant to be. I, I didn't know if this was gonna be an hour long project and it turns out that it was about a 20 minute project from start to finish. So uh, if you don't have one on your saw, I put this off for so long and really wish that I didn't. If you have the materials on hand, if you have the quarter inch bolts on hand, um, regardless of if you have the Bosch Glide or any other miter saw, I'd highly recommend that you do this. You get much cleaner cuts and it's just going to improve the look and, uh, look and process of your project. So thanks for watching and, uh, see you in another video soon.